How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Why, even the sparrows has found a home, and the swallows a nest for herself. For there she will have her young, a place near your altar. O oh Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house, for they are forever praising you. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning, Lord, that we truly do glorify you. More so, Lord, than in the melody of the music, Lord, but in the melody of our soul from within. Lord, this morning, may we glorify, show forth your greatness, and may we, as one body in Christ, Lord, dwell within the house of the Lord forever. In the precious and holy name of your Son, Jesus, the precious atoning blood that he shed upon the cross. May we worship you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And amen. Once more, what a, just a special time to, uh, to glorify Christ Almighty. And I welcome each one this morning. Do we have announcements before we go into our worship hour this morning? We have none. Uh, just one quick little true story that happened this past week. Uh, I do the maintenance at uh, the clinic in Pineview, which is Pineview Vet Hospital. And uh, one of the receptionists is pregnant, uh, first child, and she's uh, seven months pregnant. And about a month ago, I, you know, we was just up there talking. I was doing something. I said, I want you to enjoy every day of your pregnancy. She was having, you know, a little morning sicknesses and a little bit of depression. And anyway, I talked to her for a little bit. And then last week I was in there and she was having a bad day. And I said, I want you to enjoy every day of your pregnancy. And she just looked at me, you know, all, not tears in her eyes, but very, very sincerely. She said, boy, I'm trying. And that's all God asks of us. I've said many times that God has two wills. He wills that none should perish but have everlasting life. That doesn't mean everyone is going to be saved. It means God wills that we be saved. That has something to do with us. That part of that is our responsibility, our privilege. The other will is he is going to love us regardless. There is nothing we can do about that. I've heard, you know, just terrible. And I'm not belittling. I'm not, I'm not, you know, putting down anyone. But sometimes in their life, when things happen, they think God has forsaken me or doesn't love me. And there's no truth in that. So this morning, I want to be, I want us to be as uh, the little sweet girl at Pineview. I am trying. I'm trying to enjoy it. So wherever your life is in, in, in your walk of life, uh, remember God's wills. One's part of our problem or our responsibility or our privilege. But the other, and he's not going to love us any less whatever life throws at us. So this morning, here is a challenge, but also here is a problem, a promise. It's found in our second Bible, our hymnal. Hymn number 467 says, Higher ground. It says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize. Philippians 3.14. So let us now, as we stand in worship and song, and Sister Julie brings us into the ministry of music, that first lyric says, I am pressing on the upward way, the very best I can.
Let us worship together. And what a privilege that God has graciously given to every one of his children. Prayer is such a misunderstood honor to God. The only prayer a non-believer makes it through the commotion and through the clutter is, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's it. Some said, you mean he doesn't hear his prayers? Oh, yeah, God hears it. But he only hears the one. And that's a prayer of salvation. But after that, he hears them all. Isn't that my little finite mind is hard to grasp that. God hears me, Lord, help me get my shoes on this morning. Help me, Lord, with whatever I'm doing. It's, it's a continuous from the soul, not from my mind. That's what God wants out of every one of us. Paul says that continuous prayer. So let us not break the trust that God has in us and we have in him. It's two way. The only way to do that is simply pray. So let's pray. Before we do, do we have praises and concerns that we just want to bring before you? Sister Pat. Several times. Others? Yes, back. Just 
keep our school systems near prior to COVID is hitting our school systems hard. See, we just received a message from our teacher and there's three kids in her class that has COVID. So okay. just keep our school systems. And I think the flu is still going rampant through our schools too. So, and um, just keep them in your prayers. Amen. Others? Yes, Kath. Love of praise. Good doctor's report this week. All right. Yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> yeah. And um, mom's just been a little under the weather this week, so yeah, she's doing better. But. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Others? Yes. Sister Kath. Trend's sick again. She just can't catch a break. She's been to the doctor twice, Monday and Friday, and I feel like we're missing something, but God knows. So yeah. just keep praying in your prayers. We certainly will. I see the hand back here. Oh, you got another one? Go ahead. Other thing. Laura Miller sends her thanks. She's the one who <coughs> lost her house in the fire and has three teens, so young children. But she sends her praise and just very heartfelt thank you to all of you. You're welcome. Yes, brother. 16 people will embark upon their journey to attempt to become natural resources police officers beginning this Wednesday. Good. And you're the instructor? I'm one of many. Okay. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> Sis, I see the hand. Um, yeah, just keep Sarah in your prayers. Um, she had to make the tough decision to medically retire, so she'll be medically retiring at the end of the month. But um, God's got a plan for her. I keep reminding her that um, she does have some job offers, um, so some interviews this week. Yeah, so keep a, her in your prayers. Yep, Sarah's one that uh, lost some of her fingers on account of a blood clot, and now she has prosthesis. So. And then um, I also have a praise. I'm meeting one of my formal students. Um, it's a little emotional because as a teacher, you don't ever know if you hit somebody. And so I'm meeting her for lunch. She's moving to Knoxville, Tennessee, and wanted to meet me for lunch before she moved. So what a blessing that is. That's pretty awesome. I see the hand over here. Yeah, Sister Ruth. Yes, just please be with the Deer Brower family. Yes, amen. Thank you. Yes, Kat. Um, our friend Linda, she's the older lady that has been here on holidays. She's, she's been pretty under the weather this week. She's suffering from headaches, and now she's got nausea and stomach pain. Okay. And just remember her. Absolutely. Yes, Beth, Beth. I just want to praise God for great friends um, that touched it base with me this week. As It's been 10 years since we lost our beautiful angel, Bella, but I know she continues to be in our hearts. and. She shines through Sadie every day. <laughs> and Sadie smiles in her sleep, and some days I feel that she just is talking to Sadie okay. in her dream. So. Brother Mark, I seen the hand? Uh, yeah, uh, just thanks for all. I thought maybe it was something Ruth was feeding me. <laughs> had a rash and stuff and everything. Went to the doctor here, had shingles. So. No way. Oh. <laughs> she got away with this one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you're better. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Others? Yes. Uh, yes. Just keep one of Jaden's classmates in your prayers. They lost their home. Was it Friday morning? Friday or Saturday morning? Um, they lost everything. So just keep them in your prayers. Yeah. I talked to my son last night, and uh, my little granddaughter has, don't hold me to the proper name, but it's a spinal disease. Her spine is bending and twisted. Uh, and said there's nothing they can do about it. I uh, said she'll probably have surgery in maybe 10 years, uh, but uh, she's been a little bit of pain, but they said they're keeping it down. Uh, but uh, anyway, she said the, the bow is normal, but the twist, she said as she grows, it grows 1% a year. Uh, so anyway, but she's, uh, she's just a little sweet little girl. Go ahead, uh, Alyssa. Alyssa. I had to practice that because I married someone named Alicia. And uh, my wife and I and my family said, what's her name? <laughs> so anyway, that's how I can remember that one real quick. Uh, pardon? That's Lynn's girl. Yeah, he's always girl. So. Anyway, just to keep her, her uh, you know, in her prayer. So. Unspoken requests. Unspoken praises in your heart. Sister.
our Father in heaven. Lord, I thank you that your son Jesus came to earth. And he came as a child, Lord, so he grew up. Knowing all that this earthly journey can lay before him. So he understands, Lord, and your scripture teaches that he even sympathizes with us, knowing the temptations, knowing, Lord, the everyday trials that we go through but yet in all Lord he was without sin so Lord we thank you that Jesus our Savior taught us to pray so this morning Lord I want to pray Lord for each family that has lost a loved one Oh, there are many, Lord. But Lord, what great comfort that you told us that you would send the comforter and you placed him within our hearts, Lord, when we invite the Holy Spirit within. And Lord, we thank you that you never told us not to grieve, not to shed tears. But, Lord, you instructed us not to grieve without hope or to cry without knowing tomorrow, Lord, and there you are. Lord, I pray for the Miller family that lost so much. Our school system, Lord. Lord, your word says that it'll wax worse. If it doesn't, Lord, we would have to question your word. But as each day, Lord, as your plan is being fulfilled. But may we, Lord, as a body and we as individuals, Lord, just comfort our children that are in school and even our children that are grown. May they see hope, Lord, in us. May they see, Lord, Jesus in us. And so many, Lord, that lifted up a hand of praise for mothers that are... that age has cropped upon them, Lord. But all, Lord... What an awesome privilege that you gave us of growing old together. Just one day closer, Lord, to our eternal home. And Lord, classmates and teachers, Lord, as we never know that many times on this side of heaven where we've touched a soul just a kind word or gave them, Lord, the knowledge from within and they received. But the greatest gift, Lord, is to tell them about Jesus. So thank you, our Father, for times such as these precious moments. And you allow us to pray and commune with you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This past week, I heard a great message on as I was headed to work. Of course, from my house to Oakland, the radio kind of comes in and out, and you just about know where it's going to come in and out. There's one little turn there just past the house. It just leaves you for about a quarter of a mile. So you miss a little bit, static. But anyway, I was at a place, and I haven't seen either one of these movies, but 
the pastor was closing his message, he said, now, with the theme. And he just asked a question, you know, on the radio. How many of you enjoy Rocky Balboa movies? No, I don't. But I sure do enjoy his message and his closing thought. Rocky won, and I'm doing this from what memory and, and his message. The moral is dead on. I might be off a little bit on the story. But Rocky won closed, according to this pastor, with a fight between Rocky Balboa and Apollo. And I guess the movie ended with Apollo winning, three to two. And then Rocky II opens up with both of them in the hospital. Am I close, Brian? Dead on so far. Rocky, they show his face all beat up, and he had to go to surgery to reconstruct his face. So he pulled himself out of his room in a wheelchair, and he knew that Apollo was just down the hall in another room getting reconstruction surgery from the fight. And he knocked on the door, and Apollo goes, Who's there? And Rocky goes, Yo, it's Rocky. And he went into the room, and he said, Apollo, can you answer me one question? And he says, I'll try. And the question was, Apollo, did you give me your best? What a question. Boy, doesn't it fit every day. Have we given God our best? We hear football players say all the time, leave it all on the field. I know what they're talking about. As a husband, as a father, as a Christian. The fearful part of that, God might ask us that. He already knows the answer. If that don't put a chill up your spine, and it's a godly fear, some days I have to say, no, I, I didn't give it my best. Some days I do. And probably when I do is when I'm, I feel the most insecure. So as we, as a body and as we as individuals, let us, as the little pregnant, start your show really bad. I said, man, what a, you're beautiful. Pregnant woman is probably the most beautiful thing next to a bride. She said, I don't feel pretty. Next time you think you're failing, just, have I given it my best? That's all God asks. Let us receive the offering prayerfully. Did I give it my best? Sister, ushers come forward.
Our Father in heaven, what a humbling place to be, Lord, at your altar with your children. Thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege to train up a child. But, Lord, I pray that we train in such a way that they see you through us. Bless now, Lord, these two young children, Lord. Precious, precious saints. Receive the offering to complete the gift. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As a choir 
finds their way back to their seats. I asked the question, and when was the last time you was distracted? About five minutes ago. So take out your Bibles, and as you take out your Bible, and remember the last week I gave the invitation, instead of Hebrews, put our congregation in there, the letter to Salem, and then go a little bit more personal and put your name there, the letter to Donnie. As I prepare the message, and this is just a follow-up, and the Lord willing, we'll finish today, as Paul says, with your permission. But distractions or, I've entitled it, hindrances. And I shared this story, I think, a couple times, that boy, does it fit this morning with the message. So I want to share just a little quick true story, and it happened at the ballpark in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, about... 15, 18 years ago. Chris would know, just look on his phone. He could tell me the exact time. <coughs> a couple of dear friends, I was in Beachy Lumber on a Monday morning, and two of my dear friends, Dale Paul and Dave Beachies, went to a Pirates baseball game. Probably you've, you already know where I'm going with this if you heard the story. But during the game, I don't know what inning, but... Dale, Paul, dear friend, passed away, was telling me this story. And he said, I was just sitting there, and all of a sudden, the whole stadium erupted, standing ovation and cheering. And Dave, which was sitting right beside me, was just screaming and hollering. And I go, what did I miss? You didn't see it? No, I was eating a chili dog. He was there when it happened. An unassisted triple play. There's been 13 of them since baseball started. The first one was 1909 maybe. And he was distracted. For something as common as a chili dog. He said, I can't believe it. But the whole crowd erupted. And we was out. It was against Pittsburgh. And they was cheering the other team. Really the player. Sometimes in life, not all the time, we are distracted. I am distracted for that one moment in time. And we miss it. We can't allow that happen in the church and in our Christian walk. Now, I'm not there yet. Yesterday, as I was putting the final works on the message, in Cranesville got about five inches of snow yesterday morning. Just enough wind to put a little bit of waves in the yard. Gorgeous. Not any prettier than anywhere else, but it was in my backyard. And I had to shut my mind and say, Lord, this is gorgeous. Turn with me. The invitation to the book of Salem. Hebrews, God's people. Paul's been speaking about the great, or not Paul, the writer. We don't know who wrote it. But I say that occasionally with just tongue-in-cheek, but I really don't know. 
He's been writing about warnings of falling away. He's been writing about Jesus, our great high priest. But here he's given God's people the teachings. And let me read it for you. I just want to read 1 through 6, or 1 through 8. 1 through 8. The great teachings of falling away. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death. What he's talking about there is customs. That they think they can be saved or get closer to God by rituals that that lead to death. That's, That's what the writer's saying. And let us go to faith in God. Instructions about baptism, (coughs) about laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do so. We're going to move on from the milk of the word, is what the writer's saying. And here is one of the most, not the most, but it's high on the list of misunderstood teaching and I'll share with you the the Bible teaching it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift who have shared in the Holy Spirit who have tasted the goodness of the world or goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age if they fall away to be brought back into repentance because of their loss. They have crucified the Son of God all over again and subject him to public disgrace. Then he gives an illustration. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful for those who is in the farming receive the blessings of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it'll be burned. Let's pray. Our Father Father in heaven, what precious truth, Lord, that you've given to us. Lord, I pray this morning that there is no distractions, Lord, that will hold us from your word. Lord, that each one, and myself included, can truly, as the writer gives us the invitation, to move away, Lord, from the elementary teachings and go to a teaching, Lord, that will allow us to grow, Lord. Allow us to become closer to you, more instilled into your word, Lord. And only through the Holy Spirit, Lord, can we do that. So may the Holy Spirit come and just bring us a new truth, Lord. Not new from the beginning, but new unto us. May our soul, Lord, be enlightened as Paul, the writer, speaks. And may I now, Lord, in my weakness, glorify your truth and your strength. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Just a real quick... (coughs) teaching upon what the writer is saying about falling away. He said, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened and who have tasted the heavenly gift, if they share in the Holy Spirit, to come back again. He's not talking about losing your salvation. And I've heard many say, well, right there is proof. It's impossible that once you gain your salvation to ever come back if you lose it. it it's not saying that. Do you ever go through the mall or maybe walk into a restaurant and they, they have them little bits of cracker with just a taste of something really good on it? You say, here, taste this. That's what the writer is talking about. We just get a taste of God's eternal comfort. Doesn't say you're washed again and baptized in the blood of the Lamb. It says, you just receive a taste of what God has to offer. 
and then you fall away. He says, you was there, right at the door, tasted it. But then the world got a hold of you. And you swallowed it. Impossible to come back. I know many in that circumstance. So does each one of you. But the writer says, let's move on. Now I want to speak to the ones who are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Now I want to speak to the ones who have received Christ. But now, even John, the revelator, says that Jesus spoke to me to write some letters. In fact, he wrote seven of them to the different churches. And one of them, Jesus, I think it was the church of Smyrna, said, you're neither hot nor cold. And Jesus says, I, I wish you'd be one or the other. Makes it easier on me. I wish you would either confirm that you love me. Don't just taste me. I thought of Kathy as I was putting this song together, how she comes up with the songs that just move in a special way. Each and every Sunday. And one that we sing quite often is, Let all that is within me just cry holy and then cry Jesus. That doesn't say, let that little taste of Jesus that is within me. It says, let all of me as Rocky asked Apollo, hey, did you give me your best? Last week I left us off <coughs> with the message of temptation, of, of how many times in life, even Christians that has walked with Christ for, for many years, that they sometimes that wrong teaching or that that one moment in time that they grasp, that they think they're going to outgrow it. It'll never happen. You'll never outgrow temptations. In fact, Jesus' brother says, count it a joy. And it took me, I don't know, 40 years to grasp that. Every time I was going through temptation, this ain't no joy. He don't know what he's talking about. No, it wasn't that James didn't know. I didn't know. And it's still a challenge when I go through temptations each and every day. In fact, as I was putting this message together, it was temptation. Now, did you ever have that, that little? Now, Satan can't control your mind. He can't put nothing in your mind. He can't take nothing out of your mind. He's just a dog on a chain. And Jesus, through the Holy Spirit and God Almighty, lengthens and shortens that chain to their will. He's not going to come and do something to you that's not in the will of God. It, it can happen. But many are ignorant to the fact of the Word of God. I want to turn, and you can write it down, but you don't have to turn to me, but write down or in your mind, write down Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. If you remember Hosea, Hosea was a prophet that went through four kings, so he was a pretty long, outstanding prophet. And Probably most of you know the story of Hosea. You know the first thing that God did when Hosea, when he called him to be a prophet of God? Every one of you know what it is. In fact, Hosea won what, one, two maybe? First thing he had Hosea to do, go marry an adulterous woman. What? God, you called me to be a prophet, and the first thing you want me to do is marry an adulterous woman? God said, yeah, that's exactly what I want you to do. And then I want you to have 
two children with her. And then she's going to leave you, Hosea, and she's going to go back to prostitution for many years. What? Yeah. And then, Hosea, I want you to go bring her back to me, and I want you to love her. There ain't no way, sis. Yeah. You want me to what, God? God says, I want you to go and get Gomer. She's still your wife, and I want you to bring her back into your home. That ain't what God said. God said, Hosea, I want you to go find your wife, and I want you to buy her back. I want you to pay real money, real barley. And not only that, Hosea, I want you to truly love her. Not from your lips, from your heart. That's Jesus on the cross. Is what he was told. And then, Hosea, I want you to preach to my people. I want you to go to the church of Salem. I want you to preach to them. I want them to know how much it took for me to stay on that cross. Because the world, Hosea, is making excuses. And listen to what Hosea told his people, God's people. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Now, listen to how he took it off of God and put it on them. Because you have rejected the knowledge. We live in a world today you can find almost anything. In seconds, just ask Google. Don't know if it's all true or not. But I pray that you and I go to the Word of God for our knowledge and don't reject it. And you've heard me say many times, and you're going to hear me say many more times. One of the easiest things to do, but I just can't believe that. You've rejected knowledge. It's not you can't, you just won't. We are held accountable, each and every one of us, for the Word of God. And I'm not going to number them. I'm not a one, two, three kind of pastor. But one that stands out most of all of the hindrance of faith and the hindrance of growth and the hindrance of holiness is simply unbelief. Many are familiar with the Word of God. But they don't mix the Word of God with the faith that God instilled within them. Some say, well, I don't have any faith. Well, that's a lie. Either you lied or God lied. God said, I will instill in my people a measure of faith. So when the Word comes, Hosea said, it is said of these people that the preaching did them no profit. It means they didn't add nothing to it. Remember some time ago I said there was no power in the blood of Christ. There's no power in the preaching of the word of God. Unless we as God's people instill it in our heart. Mix it with faith. And the knowledge of the word is instilled in us through the Holy Spirit. What is happening to the world around us at large, and I'm not going to get in a spitting contest about all the things that happen in the media. You just be a, need a screen in front of you. The world at large is trying to isolate the word of God. From where they live.
trying to lower the word and raise society. My heart just fell the other day. What was it, an 11-year-old boy shot on a school bus in Pittsburgh? Killed. Funerals yesterday. The superintendent of schools and the principal of the school that he was murdered in, quote, we need to pray for this individual and about threw up. Oh, we'll pray when he's shot in a school bus. Heaven forbid we let the word of God come into the classroom. Will you be hot or cold? I will spew you out of my mouth. He said of my people, but the word of God and the preaching did not profit them, not being mixed with faith when they heard it. Do you have a mixer in your life that mixes the word, the truth? I had a neighbor, and I need, I'll quit this. One more story, and I'll quit. She's back or sit. They did honeybees, loved honeybees, had several hives. One day he was showing me how to extract the honey from the hive. First thing he does is put it in a mixer. That's what God does to us. You want the good of a Christian to shine forth, put him in a mixer. You stir him up fast enough and the good will come out. I've heard many times, well, this just makes me, you know where I'm going, doesn't make you nothing, just pulls out what's in you. Crystal clear water is the word of God. You can take the purest crystal clear water and you put it in a crystal clear glass and it'll glisten. You take that same water, pour it in a blue glass and it's going to be blue. Pour it in a red glass and it'll be red. Yellow glass and it'll be yellow. You can take the crystal clear word of God and you put it in the bowels of a Christian that's been washed in the blood, pure as a lamb, and he'll shine forth. Take that same word, put it in a heathen, and it'll shine forth as a heathen. We reflect what is in us. Is the world getting in? Oh, I pray. Maybe I'll finish this message next week. Mix it, my child, with unadulterated truth. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, what precious moments, Lord. And that clock on the wall, what an enemy to some. It's a friend to me, Lord, and it's a friend here at Salem. So as we move on, Lord, till that day when you break that eastern skies, may we be found a praying church a truthful church. And Lord, may we be found a loving church. But may we never bend the word. May we never, Lord, lower our standards of your truth to please the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Take your hymn books now as we turn Hymn number 621, a beautiful passage of a hymn, Near to the Heart of God. Let us stand.
And now, as our young men come forward, once more is just a reminder. Reminder of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Oh, I pray now as we go out. Sometimes our flame gets blowed out too, doesn't it? We're going along well. Count it a joy, my brothers and sisters. Count it a joy. Let's pray. And now our Father and to the Most High God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God whose only begotten Son is Jesus, the Christ, our risen Savior. Watch over thee and me till we meet again. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.